Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. Um, this is Zay. That is Brit. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I, I hope this podcast finds you well. So um, we got, we got, we got something. We got a little something special planned for you guys. You know, we we made a little recap. You know, to sum up our whole year. Um, so how you feel about that, Brit? I feel great. Um, I feel like it's been a great year for me, myself, and uh, you, of course. <laughs> All right, anyway, anyway. Uh-uh. Nah, uh-uh. No, didn't. no, I didn't do a good break no. impersonation. You got me in the beginning, though. <laughs> like a fucking bird. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> this is the BZ Podcast. I'm Zay, and that is... Brett. And you are now listening to the 2018 recap, all the best parts of this entire year. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, we had fun putting all this stuff together. Check it out. Till next year, we out. Peace. And uh, if you ain't listening to nothing else, you better at least listen to this. My inner dialogue is ruthless. Like, <laughs> like the stuff I say to myself, like I would never say out loud. Like people probably would, would I don't know, like call a therapist for me. <laughs> like, damn. Yeah. So, um, your inner dialogue is just those, those conversations you have with yourself. And a lot of people think that it can only go one way. Uh, they can be negative and more, more, more likely than not, it is negative, at least for me. So it's funny how as, as I get closer to my goals or as I get closer to the things I want to accomplish, it seems like my, my negative inner dialogue gets louder and louder and louder, you know? And even if what you're saying to yourself is not true, you're still putting energy out. It's kind of like you're still creating a self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, right. and sometimes you anticipate those thoughts before they can even manifest themselves. Mm-hmm. So you're going through your day or even even with this podcast, mm-hmm. um, we did a couple episodes and got a little bit of feedback from people in our circle and I'm totally excited. And then as it's turning into more of a reality of it happening. I just, mm-hmm. I, I feel this little creep up on my shoulder, like whispering in my ear, like, this ain't going to work. Like, shut up. Like, who wants it? Yeah, I ain't shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> you ain't never going to be nothing. Yeah, <laughs> right. Straight up. So um, I think one of the biggest things, too, that I found, like, to kind of combat it is just acknowledging being honest with yourself. You know, I think society like if if you were to come to me and ask how i'm doing i'm going to tell you i'm fine regardless of if that's true or not because i want to avoid the conversation of explaining why i'm not feeling too well this that and And the third also like i think it depends because i was thinking about that and Uh like sometimes people ain't gonna listen anyway i know or maybe make the assumption that they're not gonna listen but yeah i've I've tried to get out of the habit just saying fine i'm like i feel like a turd yeah, yeah. Moving. I don't got to explain okay to... why, but that's how I fucking feel. <laughs> well, I think what it, what happens is it's more dangerous when you're saying that to yourself. True. Saying it to yourself, you know, even if it's not true, you saying it to yourself could put off the things you need to work on. Could yeah. put off having to work against this self-sabotaging behavior and lead to denial, you know? Right. I know, like, last week we were supposed to record, and you were like, Brit. like... <laughs> Okay, I'm fine. I'm like, actually, I don't feel like it. Like, I'm just yeah. feeling like I need a mental health day. And you're yeah. like, it's fine. It's good. But I was like, so worried about letting you down and stuff. But, you know, just had to be honest, like, because it, it was going to be pretty poop. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, poop. Yeah, no, nah, because I think, um, and that's one of the things, like, I think you have to be honest with yourself when you're not mm-hmm. feeling well. You know, yeah. and just because you're built into a routine, routines aren't always positive, yeah. you know, and routines right. are almost anti-human. Uh, right. What I've come to find, like we're creatures of exploration, you know, like any any set pattern we fall into kind of goes against our nature and mm-hmm. the way society's built up 
you know, routine is everything. You got to go to your nine to five. You have all these things that you have right. to get done that are pulling you in different directions. And you can go years. I know me personally, I'm going years and wake up one morning and it's just like, oh, I'm not happy. Or, or wake up one morning and realize that all right, I'm not where I want to be because I'm running through this routine and I really need to make a, a conscious effort to make sure whatever routine I'm stuck in or, or breaking out that routine. Right. And back to the inner voice, uh, dialogue, uh, dialogue that you have with yourself. You know, I think it's a very common trait that we all have some sort of negative belief about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So like whether you tell yourself I'm ugly or people, a lot of people say I'm lazy, I'm just lazy. And, you know, like, that's not okay. Or even if people say, you know, I'm not smart enough for this or that. If you say that to yourself enough times, it's going to become your mantra and you will start to believe those things mm -hmm. are concrete. And eventually they're going to manifest themselves to be true. So we need to get into the habit of replacing those negative words with the antonym. And it may seem ridiculous at first to say to yourself, I am motivated. Mm. When you know good and damn well, you feel lazy as hell. But after yeah. a while, you know, you'll start to feel it, which in turn will make you believe that you are motivated. And, you know, you will be. You keep telling yourself, I'm motivated. I'm a motivated person. You know, stop saying to yourself, I'm lazy. I'm lazy. I'm just, you know? Yeah. So yeah. maybe that's something to try, you know, to combat any type of negative thing that you think about yourself because... You know, I hear that just from a lot of people in talking. They have one thing that they always say about themselves that is negative and they just hold to be true to them. Yeah, and it's something that they just accept. Like, mm -hmm. I find it so crazy how we think at some point if we work on these areas, even when we work on these areas, you know, even when we do all the cheesy self-help stuff to get to wherever we think we're at, we need right. to be. We think our work is done when it's it's we, we have to constantly be working. You're never yeah. finished. You are a work in progress and you're never going to get to some point where it's like, oh, no, I'm done learning about myself. I'm finished. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, it's about being consistent, like you were saying. Yeah. So, you know, Memorial Day is coming up and people be throwing around black people started it. Because when me and you were talking about it, I was like, yo, did black people start that? He was yeah, like, I, I mean, know. it was like a meme going around. It was just like yeah. the real starters of it were black people. Yeah, and I mean. I ran with it. I mean, I didn't fact check it. Right, right. So it's like, well, let's actually fact check this. Right. So, I mean, you know, as, as far as we're concerned, it's just the holiday for barbecues. Mm. You know, getting drunk, day off from work. And, you know, everybody returning to wearing all white. <laughs> niggas with they all white parties with they white candles on with they linens <laughs> <laughs> they case swisses ew right. ew. <laughs> ew but no um so pretty much we learned that many different states claim to be the birthplace of the holiday but it wasn't until 2009 that it was discovered that former slaves did create a memorial day so it is, I guess, recent news. So that's probably why. Well, well eh, that's not probably why we never heard of it because they wouldn't have told us that anyway. No. Nah. But, you know, that's why it's becoming uh, more present now to see this information. Okay. So you went into more detail about the actual event than I did. So if you will, please. All right. I'll take it from here. Uh <laughs> So, so uh, Union General John Logan is often credited with founding Memorial Day, and he pretty much just made an announcement that uh, it's Decoration Day. That's what it was called back then. And uh, today, like you were saying, multiple states, North and South, claim credit for establishing the holiday from like Georgia to Virginia to Illinois, all over the place. Mm -hmm. However, during the spring of 1865, African Americans in Charleston, South Carolina, former slaves, for the most part, held a series of memorials and rituals to honor the dead, <clears throat> excuse me, to honor the dead of Union soldiers and celebrate the struggle against slavery. Now, this was a very large event uh, yeah. on the 1st of May that year. 10,000 people? Yeah, 10,000 folk. It's a lot. Yeah, and it was, air quotes, forgotten. Mm -hmm. uh, until a historian at Yale named David Blight 
found records of it in Harvard's archives. All right, brother Black. All right, holla, holla, holla at your boy, man. Uh, <laughs> during the final year of the war, the Confederate Army converted a race course and jockey club into an outdoor prison holding Union captives. Now, Union means North, Confederate means South. Yes. Probably get that out the way. Yes. Um, the conditions of it were so bad. Uh, 257 died of disease and were buried in mass graves. So they was just dumping bodies in a big old hole. Right. And when they had to evacuate, when the Confederate Army had to evacuate, Charleston black workmen actually dug up the bodies. They came across it. They dug up the bodies and gave the soldiers proper burials. And they built a high fence around the cemetery and put the words at the entrance, martyrs of the race course. Can I say? Go ahead. So pretty much just to clarify the bodies that were there, these are bodies of northern soldiers that were captured by the southern soldiers. So gotcha. they were keeping them in a prison war camp. That That's the one he was talking about with the racetrack. Um, so they were holding them there. And when they died, they pretty much just dumped them all into this mass grave. So the people down there are the ones who, the, the blacks that were um, starting the Memorial Day or the Decoration Day event, they dug those bodies up and gave them proper burial. Just to clarify, because this part really confused me for a second. I'm like, wait, whose bodies were they? Why were they there? But mm -hmm. okay, keep going. All right. So um, what would follow after they dug the bodies up was a parade uh with about 10,000 people, like newly free people in cooperation with white missionaries and teachers. You know, you had 3,000 black school children uh, carrying armloads of roses and singing the Union March song, John Brown's Body, right? So it's funny because maybe about a week before we uh, decided on this topic, I'm on Instagram and I came across a post from Killer Mike, Killer Mike the Rapper, and he was saluting a man named John Brown. Mm -hmm. And then as the, for one of the first things I come across is John Brown's body being sung by these school children, these black school children. So maybe had to look up John Brown. So John Brown was an American abolitionist and he pretty much just believed in a white, let me put that out there, a white American abolitionist <laughs> right. who believed in violence is the only way to overthrow the institution of slavery in the United States. Yeah. So a little background on him, he, he at 12 years old, he was traveling through Michigan and he witnessed that African-American boy being beaten and it just haunted him for years. So it kind of formed something in him right? that made him want to really get involved and really see, he, he saw the problems with slavery and just how inhumane it was. Mm -hmm. So he worked on the Underground Railroad. Um, he met with, Frederick Douglass in 1847 in Springfield, Massachusetts. Then in 1849, he moved and settled in a black community in North Elba, New York. Okay. Right? Went, 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 went and moved to the hood. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? For the people. Right? So, uh, as I was saying before, he, he believed in using violence to end slavery, and uh, he actually became involved into a, in a conflict. In 1856, he and several of his men killed five pro-slavery settlers in, re in retaliation of an attack on, I'm probably going to butcher this word, but it's Potawatomi Creek, right? And uh, another thing I found a quote. Potawatomi. Right? <laughs> Go ahead. So uh, another thing I saw is a quote, and he pretty much, uh, he wasn't in, agree in, in agreement with a lot of the other abolitionists, and he said these men are all talk, and what is needed is action. So my hey. man John Brown was about that action, you know. So y'all ain't about that action. Yeah, y'all ain't about that action, right? Popping them um, gums, but you ain't about that action. So another <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so another note that he had in in uh, 1858, he actually liberated a group of enslaved people from Missouri and helped guide them to freedom in Canada. And it was also in Canada that Brown spoke of plans to form a free black community in the mountains of Maryland and Virginia. Yeah, see, I saw there's so much with this topic because I did come across something like that. Um, I saw this woman talking about her ancestors and how they had a little like settlement up in the mountains. And her great grandfather was like one of the last 
blacks from the Civil War era still living up in the mountains. I'm just like, what? I mean, it's something I definitely want to look into more later, but this topic goes in so many different directions. Like, oh my gosh. That's true. But, um, yeah. It's... All right, so more on Brown. Um, mm-hmm. uh, in October of 1859, he led a party of 21 men on a raid of the Federal Armory in Harper's Ferry, Virginia, now West Virginia. So he held dozens of men hostage with the plan of inspiring a slave rebellion. Oh, shit. (laughs) Right? So Brown's forces held out for two days. Mm -hmm. They were were eventually captured, and he went to trial quick as hell. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And November 2nd, he was sentenced to death. So he's actually executed on December. Yeah, he was, oh, November 2nd, he was ex he was sentenced to death and then on december 2nd he was executed so his grave is actually still in north elba new york near lake placid and it was declared a national historic landmark in 1998 so john brown's farm estate historic site uh it's been managed since 1896 the grounds are still open to the public and you could take tours of this place in the warmer months but um wow so that's a little bit on him the things that we learn, huh? Right. The more that's you know. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You remember uh, back when we was living in the dorms and they would shut the water off oh, and we had to take a poop across the yeah, street at Barnes borders. and Nobles. Yeah. Yeah. It was right? borders. They ain't around no more. It was borders. Yeah, yo, that was terrible. And. <laughs> yeah. Why do I feel like you Go ahead. like? Go ahead. Out me. You blew the fuck up. I did. There was something with that. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I didn't blow it up. What I'm, happened? Yeah, with listen, that? I'm tell y'all, uh-huh. yeah. I'm gonna let y'all in on a secret. <gasps> oh, I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him. I remember. Wouldn't... Yes. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you guys what I what I did. <laughs> now let me t- let's preface this, y'all. It is the shit show. Our dorms were a piece of shit. Yeah, on Broad and Chestnut, sit right in, across from City Hall. You think it'd be super nice? As much money as we were paying. Exactly right. Mm-hmm. And we lived on the 16th floor. Mm-hmm. The elevators was broke half the time. Um, sometimes the electricity and the water would be off. We'd have to walk all the way upstairs and then you'd have to walk all the way downstairs, mm-hmm. cross the street, take a shit. Wasn't having it one day. I wasn't having it one day. And I was in the dorm by myself. I was in my dorm <laughs> by myself. I don't know where you guys was at. And bruh, I shit in the, bruh, bruh, I shit in the bag, all right? I said it. I shit in the bag. Yo. <laughs> I doubled up grocery bag, doubled up grocery <laughs> bag. <laughs> And put it, and listen, listen, I, I, I pulled it to my butt, and <laughs> I pulled it to my butt, and I couldn't do it at first. Like, I was too self-conscious. I got shy. shy by yourself. I got shy, and I couldn't do it. And then when I was about to not do it anymore, it just happened, and I felt, <laughs> yeah, it was gross because I felt the bag get heavy. Like, it hit the bottom of the bag, and now I had to really hold the bag up, right? But that's not the worst of the story. It's not like I just disposed of it. Yeah, I went right to that trash room and threw that, tied that shit yeah, up. Yeah, the threw trash it right room. In the trash room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But why do I feel like I ran into you or something? Like I remember seeing you holding the bag. Unless I am mistaken. No, Maybe shut you up. Did I don't know. Once. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I think I told. I think I told you. Like I had to tell somebody immediately because it was really funny. I was laughing while I was doing it. We used to live next door to each other. <laughs> I never thought it would get to this. Um, so yeah, you probably yeah. did come right over yeah. and tell me about it. Yeah, you're stressed. Shut up. Oh hey, by the way. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking about stress. Yes. Let's talk about stress, baby. Let's That's talk not about. That, song. that is not that song. Baby. But. Still, I like what you did. But it still kind of went. Let's talk about stress. Let's talk about stress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Niggas, I wonder what is anybody, like, not stressed out, though. Uh, I don't know anybody who isn't complaining about something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really thinking about it now. Like, when is there a time where you're not stressed about something? I guess maybe it depends on the levels of stress. That's where it comes into play, you know? You know when you weren't stressed? Hmm. When you were a baby. Nigga, you were stressed because you couldn't even talk. You're like, hey, shit. <laughs> but you got like ah! instant gratification. Not all the time. I feel like there's different levels of stress. Our social media community is the one we created for ourselves. 
-hmm. We are the aggregators of its content and we choose what we would like to expose ourselves to. Like literally, we follow who we want to follow and we like what we like based on our own values and preference. So like we're kind of gods. Like we're kind of the (laughs) gods of our social media internet presence. (laughs) Yeah, like we are the gatekeepers to the information we see. And I think a lot of times that gets overlooked (laughs) even by myself. You are banished. Right? (laughs) Right, Straight up. Straight up. Infidel. (laughs) Right? (laughs) So, um, So while the internet like is endless in its access to ideas, our preferences turn our internet experience into like a insulated world, like an idea island, right? Mm-hmm. A steady rotation of the same thoughts, opinions, and um, I think that's kind of just our biological need for camaraderie, or our biological need to to be around people who have the same ideas, values, skill set. All that stuff, right? Right, and what makes us comfortable, you know, doesn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rock the boat. That's the. You know, I'm happy you pointed that out. Like we create a space where, or our internet experience is a space where we feel the most comfortable. I feel like you find out early that like fat people aren't afforded the same leeway as skinny people as far as presentation. Right. So like I learned you, if you're gonna be fat, you can't be fat and sloppy. Right. Like you can't have a lazy collar. <laughs> you, you you can't you can't have like a like one of them dingy mm-hmm. dingy collars you can't automatically shirt. look funky. don't be dingy don't yep. be dingy don't be dingy because i can literally have the same set right sitting next to my counterpart who's right. skinnier oh well, dingy shirt right but like we said remember the, you guys you guys remember the freaking baggy trend when that came oh, out yeah. that wasn't good for us but you know we had to join in of course but we just looked freaking like shamu just huge extra huge free size tees <laughs> free size long long galaxy tees but then you try to wear the baggy shit and then it look like it just fit You're like but it's supposed to be have the baggy look <laughs> it just fit <laughs> it's snug like wait it's supposed yeah. to you know, that's a fact. There's certain things like you don't want to wear. Like, like I, I don't know. I, <laughs> this might be personal to me, but like, what? don't put me in. Don't put me in a turtleneck. Like, don't put. Hell <laughs> <laughs> no! That double chin resting on the collar. <laughs> don't put me in the turtleneck. Nah, yo, yo my face don't is round as shit. Uh, then my mom put this dumb ass short haircut on me. Like, it was a problem. Like, who little butterball? Right. <laughs> a little milk that head. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't put me in overalls. Oh, no. Don't put me in I'm suspenders. You just look like a little fat kid with suspenders on. Like, you look like you a whole meme. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Oh, I just hated in dance class. Like, I was a really good dancer, but my little chubby ass, man. Once I started getting chubby, like, them leotards. Them oh, one man. pieces wasn't popping. Like, I still got them tapes hidden. My mom keep trying to pull them out. Nah, yo. I feel kind of bad for girls because, like, most of the time, like, your stuff is supposed to fit. Mm-hmm. Snug. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what else? I used to hate going to church and having to tuck my damn shirt in. Oh, yeah. Tucking in the shirt is always wax. Tuck your shirt in, man. <laughs> Belly all over yes, your belt and shit. Yes. <laughs> you know what's messed up? Mm-hmm. Like, speaking on, like, uh, girls and boys clothes. Uh, you remember mm-hmm. Bugle Boy? Yeah. You remember Bugle Boy? Why mm-hmm. was there a size for boys that call Husky? Yeah. <laughs> why, why I didn't see no thing? Husky in girls, but I didn't even know that existed until I started working in retail. You know, because I'm not buying boys' clothes or whatever. But, um, yeah, I would see that when I was going through the clothes wearing at the Gap. I'm like, Husky. I said, oh, my God, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. know. All my clothes was Husky. Oh. Little husky bugle boy corduroys, <laughs> little thick salad cords. Don't put me in cords, yo. <laughs> corduroys. People don't talk about that type of stuff when you get into relationships. They always want to talk about cheating. Don't cheat, which is a huge thing, of course. Don't fucking cheat. But there's still a lot of other things you got to worry about with people. You know, um, certain people don't like being like you know in certain groups. Don't want to go certain places. I know I yeah. can be like that. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, don't like yeah, it's, onions in their food. Like, 
It's not, yeah. it's not, it's not. I can't I mean, be with it. No, petty. no, I can't. No, that is a petty. That's a big deal. Yo, grow up. That's all the flavor. All I, the flavor. I can't be with a picky eater. Add that to my list. Add that to my list of things. I can't be with somebody who want to eat chicken fingers oh all God. the time. Connections made in the hippocampus also help us associate memories with various senses. So the association for me, anyway, between like the scent of apple cinnamon candles and Christmas like that would be st- created there. Now, mm. I don't know about you guys, but apple cinnamon candles can only be burned in the fall or Christmas time for me. Like I I can't burn that in the in the summer cuz it just smells like Christmas and yeah. I just get confused. I don't like it. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yo, mine, I remember like elementary school uh like when it was chicken nugget day. <laughs> Like chicken nugget date of fumes, like coming. Uh-huh. And it wasn't even good chicken nuggets. Yeah, you know yeah. that joint was just like that joint was some some. I don't even know what they make. You know, chicken kids, nuggets. it's just chicken nuggets are the best. Yo, did you ever see? Um, it was like a chef trying to show kids what they're eating. And yes, he like they throws, didn't get bruh, bruh. So he throws. He takes like all these pieces of chicken, like all the pieces <laughs> you don't want, the the bones, and he grinds it up. And as he's grinding it up, uh-huh. the kids are like, "Ugh, nasty!" Duh. All the parts of the chicken you don't want, like, "Ugh, nasty!" Right? Yeah, nasty. Then he takes it out. He forms a little patty, puts a little bread on it, and then um, fried it he's up. like, he was like, fried it. Up. He was like, now who wants to eat that? Every last one of those <laughs> kids raised their hands. <laughs> Hell yeah! I, I was looking like, like I looked with at it. it too. I was like, "Yeah, me too." <laughs> right? <laughs> I still, I still monster. I still throw down on some on some McDonald's chicken nuggets, oh yo. Oh my gosh, yo! Those are beak wings, yo. yo they made out of hundred percent beak. <laughs> right? <laughs> the other day, I took Shay to McDonald's. He wanted a fucking McFlurry, and I told him, "I said, don't get your hopes up. You know that machine always broken." <laughs> Yeah, we so need anyway, to get to the bottom of that. Anyway, the machine was broken, and you know he's like, "Come here, come on!" I was like, "I told you." Anyway, <laughs> he got some nuggets because he was like, "Well, he wanted me." I was like, "F it, whatever." I got him some nuggets. I never take him to McDonald's. We go probably three times a year, so mm-hmm. I got him some nuggets, and he was like, "You want this last one? Like, it just tastes like nothing." And I'm like, <laughs> "And I'm like, what? McNuggets pop? What you talking about? <laughs> Let me get that jump." So I eat it. It literally tasted like nothing. I was like, ew. Yeah. Like, I can't believe the day came. I finally said these nuggets is nasty. Maybe they put, I don't know, a little salt or something. Did you, they did they you, changed did you the recipe. In, hold on, but what, what sauce is you Sweet and sour, nigga. Yo. Sweet and sour. It oh, had yeah, no only one flavor. It was weird. I find it interesting because they'll shut down any minority or any black person using their platform as a narrative. Right. Using their platform to to push a narrative or to to speak up for social matters. Yeah, freedom but, of speech doesn't apply to us. <laughs> yeah, but then at the same token, they'll turn around and and do the dab on the evening news. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, it's yes. always like they, it's always they picking and choosing what parts of the culture they want to acknowledge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you, even Black Lives Matter. All lives matter. Uh, right. Yeah, so it's always like just just the pushback, and I think it's crazy. Like the things that aren't for them, they mm-hmm. have to address. They have mm-hmm. to say something about it. They just always need to be the most important. You know, as soon as the light ain't shining on them, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, no, wait, no. <laughs> like, okay, uh, <laughs> relax. Uh-huh. <laughs> you always have the shine. Chill out. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's crazy how the media will portray a black teen mm-hmm. wearing a hoodie mm-hmm. as a thug. Mm-hmm. But that same black teen wearing a hoodie doing a cool new dance yeah. will make its way, you right, know? Right. And it's like, we can only be acknowledged. Once they once they didn't control the narrative through minstrel shows right. or whatever, is when they had a problem of the narrative we chose or were choosing to display. Right. You know? Uh, it's kind of like they're just obsessed with our culture. Pretty and much, I think that's that's well documented. <laughs> right, because you know that they had the story, you know, in a nice, neat little package. That's what it uh-huh. is. That's what it's gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. now that you know, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, it's coming back into you know Black love, Black power, and mm. it's in no way to shun anyone else. It's just that we need to uplift ourselves. Because of the, I mean, yeah, they started 
showing positive imagery but if you look you know especially starting with like gangster rap and all that type of stuff Mm -hmm. like there was a decline of our image and of course we know that's just one side of it but from the outside looking in you know that's all we are just you know we just all live in the hood you know what i'm saying and we're all violent and Mm -hmm. you know that even those people that live in the hood and that are violent are still you know, regular, people. yeah, regular, <laughs> normal people. People. Yeah, so it's like we're getting back into, you know, expressing ourselves in a more beautiful manner. And nope, that's not okay. Why can't we have, you know what I mean, self-love? <laughs> it's either, it's either if, we, if we're not gangsters, we expect it to be entertainers. Mm-hmm. Or if we're not gangsters, we expect it just to be quiet and... and don't don't cause no ruckus, you know. Right. It was funny because I did a lot of my research for this topic while I was at work, and I do work with a whole bunch of white folk. <laughs> and I'm I'm looking over my shoulder, minimizing screens and stuff. Like I feel like I feel like I'm not even supposed to be reading. Like like, <laughs> yo, shut up. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm not even supposed to be reading this. Done. Like somebody going to tell on me or something. You right. Know? Uh- He's researching his oh, history. Well, you know, Mass ain't gonna let you see that. Don't, don't let him see you reading and stuff. Not, not, you ain't supposed to know about the bullshit we used to do. Uh, right, straight up. So it's like, it's almost like it's a dual, it's like a double consciousness we have to live with. Like mm-hmm. trying to stay real to ourselves, but also having to navigate a society that was built on discrimination against us. Right. So pretty much throughout 1861, which is the beginning of the war, into 1862, many Southern slaves would escape to the Union forts in hopes of being able to fight against the Confederates. Mm-hmm. So when once the war, you know, was, you know, was started up and then, you know, the Union's moving down, whatever, vice versa, they're, you know, everybody's moving around, they're setting up these different forts. The Southern slaves were hoping, you know, let me try to escape over to them and prove that, you know, I can be... Uh, of useful. Of yeah, useful. exactly. I can be of use to them in some way mm-hmm. and they'll, you know, take me on. Because um, free men in the North, they still were not allowed to enlist technically in the war at this point because there was a law in effect saying that blacks couldn't enlist into the military. But I guess after they saw how useful the Southern blacks were, you know, to them, the ones that were sneaking over, they lifted the ban and allowed them to like officially enlist. They lifted that ban in 1862 and they would only but they would only allow the Southern blacks in if their masters were confederate so it's like hold on where you come from all right you a southern black all right i think it was you know i think it was a kind of like a vetting system it's like it's safe to assume that if your master was a confederate you want to fight against the confederates right but i'm like too like how would you even know if they tell them the truth like yeah that that's just everybody. I'm like, yup. <laughs> yeah 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 down there alabama mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah he was a jerk <laughs> He was a real jerk. <laughs> you know, Just that's say some a, common ass name. Yep, but no, Thomas. That, that's like that's a, an example of how illogical like prejudice is. Right. Because it's just like you just threw this in with like one, a stipulation that you had no way that you can prove. Exactly. How are you going to prove that? <laughs> <laughs> and I think we downplay what we have had to experience and endure to get to the point of when we hit a successful landmark because many times it happens, you know, just like on a Tuesday Mm. or it just seems to happen by chance. You know what I mean? It's not like it just comes from out of the blue, but the universe already put many tests in front of you that you didn't see, that didn't seem related to that specifically, but it was helping, you know, build up your resilience and knowledge. So even though it doesn't seem like it all applies, like everybody's been through some stuff. Like, even though it might seem like, oh, I just, cause somebody got hurt. I got this management position. That's the way it's supposed to happen. You know, don't think that you're not worthy because it happened by a fluke. You know, you still been through how many other things in your life to get to the point where you're at, you know? So I think people forget about that in the moment and they start feeling like they're a phony, but it's like, no, you worked for this, even if it was not in the same capacity of, you know, kind of just got to roll with it, exactly. you know, and then, like we, we have a tendency, like you were mm-hmm. saying, we have a tendency to think everybody got it together. Everybody is holding on by a thread I'm yeah. you right now. Like people in your immediate circle, you never know Pretty what they're much. going through. Yes. And if I would, if we jump back, like, like mm-hmm. being honest, like somebody asks you normally, if I ask you how you're doing, 
you're going to say, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Or, you know, even if it isn't true. So it leaves you to wonder, you know, how many people are going through certain things that you think have everything planned out. Don't nobody got it figured out. Son. Not one bit. I feel good that I rarely t- say. Yeah, you never say you're fine. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you never say you're fine. (laughs) Because I've been trying to embrace that, you know, everybody got something like, wait, I'm not mine. Yeah, we're just okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. But then then on the flip side of that, it gets annoying every time you ask somebody, you're like, great. Great. I feel amazing. (laughs) Right? Fantastic. Low-key side-eyeing them. Life. <laughs> right? Like, mm, okay. I used to literally rush home to get to my computer when I was younger from school to download music off of Kazaa or LimeWire. Kazaa You never did Lime Napster, Wire. though? I did, but, like, it was Napster, so brief when I got on it. By the yeah, time, like when yeah. I, exactly. Like, mm-hmm. like, when I got on it, it was, like, always Done. almost dwindling yes. out, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, I introduced myself to Stevie Wonder's catalog just by downloading music indiscriminately, mm-hmm. like just downloading whatever I could find. I remember like so much so I would download all this old music, you know, your Smokey Robinsons, your Aretha Franklin's. Rest in Give peace. me some Al Green. Al Green's, exactly. <laughs> Marvin Gaye's, all that. Right. I didn't know the names of the songs. Mm-hmm. And and my mother used to call me a crooner. I didn't even know what that meant until I got older, you know. But um, you wouldn't know what shit sounded like until it was done downloading. So you were literally just out there exploring, right? You know, and shit, you would get those one those one links. This shit would take like three days to download. <laughs> <laughs> but like the that type of dedication, even though we were pirating the mm-hmm. shit out of the music, that type of dedication to like really explore somebody's catalog that really made you attach yourself to an artist. I mean, I feel, of course, you know, just to argue your <laughs> argue argue your case. As if just for me, you know, just argue against your case. Um, as far as you're saying, t- the time spent in investing, you know, yourself into collecting and finding this music. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like every single mode has that. But like now, I mean, even if you think about it, like you just said. You think about how you were saying, you know, how we used to just sit there and record off the radio and shit like that. You know what I mean? And you mm-hmm. literally were having, you couldn't do nothing else. Like, you had to just sit there and wait, make sure you're hitting the buttons. You know what I mean? So, but then, you know, once we started with the file sharing sites, you know, all we had to do was click a few buttons. Now, that is way easier, you know what I'm yeah. saying, than just sitting there waiting for a song. So, now it's like. You know, you can still invest your time like looking for music, but it's so simple now. Now you just hear it instantly. I think you take it for granted. I mean, yeah, definitely, definitely. definitely. But that's all you know. I mean, I'm sure people thought we took it for granted because we had to play records. You're right. So I don't know. You know, I feel like, like you said, it's generational, but it's just cool. You know, I didn't even think about that. How you said we we went through those different modes. So we, I, you know, at least we can have an appreciation you know, for seeing how everything is transgressing. So it's cool. Yeah, one thing you said when we were talking about it before, it was like when you downloaded, even though you were stealing the music, when you downloaded it, like yeah. it was it was yours. Mm-hmm. Like it was like I downloaded this, this was mine. And it kind of gave you a sense that like you, it was in your possession. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like. Wait, I said I transgressing. Can... I think I meant to say transcending. <laughs> I don't even. I'm know like when transgress you said that. doesn't even sound <laughs> like that's the right word, and I was like, you know, on a roll, and then I'm like, wait, mm-hmm. I can shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but you were saying how like when you downloaded something, it was kind of like yours; it was in your possession, and you said like you still oh, had yeah. like on your hard hard drive like a whole bunch of oh, yeah, still, actual files. Yeah, I still have them same old files from back when I was like 14. <laughs> And you won't delete it. Hell no. Then you're not going to delete them. Mm-mm. I'm like, what if I can't find these again? Yeah, right. <laughs> but no, but then too, I do have some music like from people too that, you know, just random artists that yeah. is nowhere yeah. to be found. So that's yeah, kind of sure. cool. Mm-hmm. But like um, with the streaming, it's kind of like you don't have that same attachment. Like you can play something. I find myself playing something mm-hmm. and I might like it for the day. and 
once I search something different and that gets lost in the searches, mm -hmm. I might never hear that song again. Okay. Respect your penis. <laughs> what? Respect your penis. Only your penis? Like, everybody should respect their genitals. What do you mean? Well, I'm talking, this is my list, all right? I'm sorry, I was giving general <laughs> lists. I wasn't just doing for women, so sorry. Well, everybody should respect it. I'm talking to guys. Guys need to hear this. Fine. I thought you were talking to all of us. Go ahead. Talk I am. To the I guys. am. I am. Ladies, let's just sit over here and wait for them to finish. Oh, God. Making me just so fucking bad. wait. Go ahead. What about oh, the damn. penis? Respect it. Now nah, I even want to talk Dress about it. Dress it up. What? <laughs> what you had to say oh. about the penis, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Um, all right. So here we go. It's not just about the penis. Mm -hmm. All right. Understand sex is an energy transfer. Mm -hmm. Boom, it's deeper than that. Okay. Um, you don't know what energy you're picking up. Um, Got you. Don't be shallow. It's exactly. Okay. Too mm -hmm. much meaningless sex yeah. will make you feel empty. Yeah, absolutely. It catches up. Because that's the thing. Like We're going to say, don't forget, I'm sorry. Don't forget what you're going to say. But people always want to talk about being, you know, fuck buddies and, oh, we're just going to have sex. Stop it. Shut up. Y'all know that's a fucking lie. Let it go. Like, no matter what. There's always Something's one person, happening. yeah, always one person catches feelings. Like, Something's you may not up. be the person that time, but the other person will. And then another time, you're going to be the one to get your, uh, you know, your heart hurt. And I'm sure all of us has been in that situation where, you know what I mean? We went into it like, yeah, da, 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 and we were the ones that got hurt. And we've been in the situation where we were the ones who were more, we you know, side, withdrawn. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, don't, like you said, it's it's deep, definitely way more deeper than, you know, yeah, the it's way more the deeper act. than just the physical act. Mm -hmm. Um. Here's another one for everybody. Master, masturbate. Masturbate, click. Clear your mind. What? Yeah, masturbate. Masturbate every now and then. You know, like if you really got to think about it, sometimes you need that post Oh, that you're saying before you go and make a bad decision. Yeah, and mm. sometimes you need that post-orgasm clarity. <laughs> <laughs> and not every option is a viable one. Yeah. Definitely. Not everything that just drops in your lap needs to stay in your lap. Sometimes it drops in your lap. You need to throw that shit it's out. It's a you test. It's the devil that. Mm -mm. The devil. Sometimes mm -mm. you got to say, mm -mm. Mm -mm. no, leave it. <laughs> Get out. Run. Mm -mm. But, um, but essentially, to wrap it all up, there is no perfect relationship, but you should not be exhausted of your time, sanity, or money. Facts. Dealing with anyone. God sure. damn. Y'all yo, remember the physical fitness test? See, y'all ain't have that shit. Fucking flexed arm hang. Yo, nigga, th like, what in the fat shaming Olympics was that? <laughs> what? <laughs> Think about that, right? They they do all this physical stuff. He right. got a clipboard. The like, teacher right, got a no. clipboard. Yes. Yo, so I remember, like, I'm big ass. You can't do no pull up. Why right. you got me doing it in front of the class, yo? But even still, too, like I couldn't do no pull ups. But I was always still like I could still move around. You know, I wasn't like yeah, so yeah. fat. Like I was chubby, so I could still do shit. But it still looked whack on me. Like look at her try to get up. Like yo, <laughs> <laughs> just getting judged by your peers. Yeah, in front like of I'm over body. here. I could do a split and shit. But it's like a little chunky ass doing a split. Get your ass. Up. <laughs> get no kudos. No oh my god, yo. Yeah, I was totally cool with like I was totally cool knowing I couldn't do stuff, yo. What I didn't need is everybody else knowing I couldn't exactly. do it. Like I didn't need a girl like I had a I had a crush on in class to know my belly's too big and I can't touch my toes. Like <laughs> Oh no, he ain't even flexible. Mm. I knew he couldn't do it. Look at me. Over there shaking. <laughs> the views and opinions expressed by Kanye West do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the good folks here at BZ Podcast. Activist, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you still on the notes, Britt? Yes, sir. Maybe you read you read the, the definition of activist. I came up with the definition of activist. Okay. <laughs> it is a noun. <laughs> <laughs> Born during the repost era, a person who uses social media to campaign in hopes to bring about political or social change. Notice that it is a noun, so this isn't meant to be derogatory in any nature. And I think we all have activist tendencies. Like mm -hmm. I, I post things from time to time that I want to draw attention to. Right. We follow them. We wait to come across their posts whenever something big happens. We repost what we identify with and we applaud their perspective. They are heaven sent. 
you like how I keep playing to God mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Because we are the <laughs> gods of our universe. We yeah. follow, we are the sheep. We follow people that mm-hmm. will lead us to the promised land. So they are heaven sent, the people we follow. Um, they are a personal reflection of our own ideas. That's what drew us to them in the first place. Because if they weren't these things, we wouldn't have followed them. Right. I've come to the conclusion I have literally no remorse for skinny people that get fat later on in life. Absolutely not. Don't come to me with your problems. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Right. Um, you're not part of this club. Right. Right. You're, you're not in this racket. Yes. You're not a lifer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a lifer. You're not a lifer, oh my right? Gosh. Depression is like a form of chronic stress, essentially. Uh, and chronic stress is just when you have prolonged periods of feeling stressed out about something and you can't shake it, then it just kind of slips into a depression because of the feeling of hopelessness. And then uh, actually, too, you know, anxiety uh, ties in, too, with depression and stress. But anxiety is more so um, the feelings, you know, feeling fear of, you know, things that you don't even really know what you're, fit, like, worried about. Just mm-hmm. always that anxious feeling. And I guess that's kind of how they try to really differentiate it is anxiety is literally when you're feeling stressed out and fearful, but you don't know why. Okay. Or it's just like the anticipating of something like you just something that like, you yeah, can't like, even pinpoint. Or it's like, you know, you just know something's going to happen and nothing is even showing that it's going to happen. But you're always just feeling that way. Like, oh, something's going to go wrong. or You know, mm-hmm. but yeah. So. All <laughs> right. So, um. Work stress causes 10% of strokes, and in the past 20 years, there's been a 60% increase in productivity accompanied by a stagnant wage. So no wonder niggas is wild. Mm-hmm. We work in 60% harder right. and not really getting paid much more, you know? And they're saying that um, stress is the basic cause of all human illness and disease. Three out of four doctor visits are stress-related ailments. Stress uh, increases the risk of heart disease by 40%, heart attack by 25%, and 50%. I don't know how it says and 50%. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. But that makes <laughs> sense, though, because when you're stressed out, it causes high blood pressure. And high blood pressure causes strokes and heart attacks. So, you know what's funny? Um, every time, like, sometimes like, when I would go to the doctor just for, like, you know, yearly checkup and things like that, It would just so happen to be like either I was like arguing with somebody on a text or somebody's like, you know, stressing me out. You know what I mean? And it was like, I remember like two or three times in a row when I would go to the doctor, I would literally be in the waiting room like arguing or snapping on somebody, like texting, you know (laughs) what I'm saying, getting all worked up and shit. So then it's like I go into the, um, to the room and they take my blood pressure, and they're like, whoa, like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah. no, like, I'm I'm really worked up right now. Like, I'm sorry. And, they, like, and they were just, like, freaking out. And I'm like, because it's all the skyrocket. They were, like, you know, like, scared. Like, they're thinking that was just my normal. Because, you know, I'm I'm acting like I'm cool walking in. Like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. the inside, I'm boiling. <laughs> so I have to tell them, like, I'm actually, like, really upset right now. I was like, so they were like, all right, let's just calm down. Like, put your phone down. <laughs> Take 10 minutes, and then they take it again, and they see that it went down. It, go, it went down, yeah. Yeah, that's happened a few times. And the first time, I wasn't really trying to tell them what was going on because I wasn't thinking. I'm like, oh, my heart was racing. Um, You know, it, it was like each time it was like something where, like, you get the heart palpitation, like the heart dropped. Like, it was some really bad. I don't even remember. I know one time there was some dude I was talking to. He told me through it. Child. Probably, look, probably saw something I shouldn't have seen online. <laughs> it was all upset. And another time I was probably talking to my family, getting all upset. But mm. I was like, wow, that really, like, that's a real thing. Like, stress can freaking kill you. Absolutely. <laughs> like, it's Often. a thing. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. You ever watch that show, My Strange Addiction? No. Yeah. Not too much, though. Why? What? I saw this. I don't watch it like mm-hmm. that, but I just came across this episode where these people were uh, addicted to to what is it, uh, coffee enemas? They were just constantly oh. brewing coffee and, and putting coffee in their butt mm. and then enemas to the point where it was, like, affecting their yeah, everyday life. Yeah, I was like, like, but that can seem like it won't, I mean, that's too much. No, they were doing it, like, maybe, like, four or five times oh, a day. Oh, hell no. And it was becoming, like, a health risk. 
Yeah, well, heavy dying though. <laughs> heavy dying though. Like they went to the market, and um, like they both had like different types that they oh liked, like God. different brews. Like when I, I like the Arabica. Ah! Beer. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is this thing? Like your booty pulsate? Like, ew. Right? Like, I don't know. I, I, mm. Yeah, don't take a cup of coffee at their house, yo. Off the ass. What? All right. I saw that on a YouTube video and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not even going to get into that. I don't All right. coffee up my butt. That's a nah. lie. Uh, what else can we talk oh, about? Oh, no, no, no. So, listen. We were talking about, <laughs> me and Zay talk about poop all the time. So, yes. we were talking about how when you get the bubble guts and you're in the most inconvenience of places. <laughs> and I was saying to him how that hasn't happened to me in so long. Like, I legit can't even remember the last time where I've been, like, panicked. Like, oh, my God. Like, my st- I doubled mm. over in pain. Like, I don't remember. I mean, from <laughs> clearly, I remember, honestly, I was, like, in eighth grade. And I was coming from taekwondo practice. And I was, like, just sitting there, like, crying. Like, yo, step on the gas. Like, <laughs> but since then, I can't really remember a time where I haven't had access to the bathroom. And I just had to, like, wait it out. And you've told me, you know, sitting in traffic, like, you've been telling me how, you know, oh you had God. to, like, lift up off the seat, like. Yo, let me tell you, yo, I got a, I got an hour commute to work, yo. I got an hour commute to work, and if you guys don't know me, sometimes I'm greedy as hell. I'll go through these spells where, like, I'm just eating, eating. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not for nutrition. This is just being, being fat <laughs> and being gluttonous, right? So it was like a Monday morning, and I wasn't even hungry, but I stopped and got like a breakfast sandwich, right? I'm driving, I'm probably like 20 minutes away from work. I hit traffic. The minute I finish the last bite of this damn sandwich, my stomach go crazy. <laughs> stomach in knots. You in know, knots, it's a right? bacteria so, net or something. Like, why so fast? Oh, my God. <laughs> Bruh, when I said, like, I had to pinch my butt cheeks while I was driving, y'all. Like, I'm lifted off of this seat, trying not to jam on the gas. Oh, like, God. trying not to hit the gas right. all hard. I'm stuck in traffic, right? So, I started to clock in at the time. And I, I end up... I get to work, no incident. <laughs> no incident. I get to work, right? But for some reason, anytime you gotta really go to the bathroom, take a take a shit, the closer you get to the bathroom, the more intense it goes. Like the more intense the stomach pain goes. It was to the point where I was walking and <laughs> the vibration of the footstep. So... <laughs> yeah. I'm walking and I gotta like stop every couple of seconds because like the 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 intensity, like you got to make a decision of is this next step going to make me shit or <laughs> it, do if I could just stay still, will I be able to just just make it past this flurry, right? Right. right. So I gotta, I gotta, I'm already late to work. I gotta pass my, I gotta pass the bathroom to go to my computer, clock in, and then go to the bathroom, mm-hmm. bruh. Somebody probably talk to me. I'm like, oh, I gotta go. Right. Like, like uh, right. I start walking to the bathroom, yo, and I just felt a <laughs> like, like, it was like, Whoop. and literally, I said this in my head. I said, yeah, I think I'm gonna shit on myself. Oh my god. So I instantly, yeah, I instantly started thinking of like all the scenarios, like how am I going to tell my <laughs> boss? Cause I gotta go home cause I shit right. myself. Like that is very. All right, so luckily I make it to the bathroom, but like literally as I'm making it to the bathroom, I'm over here juggling my my uh my damn my damn belt trying to get it open fast right. enough. Right, as I'm pulling my pants down, oh my flush. god, oh my like just missed, just right. missed, the vomiting Ugh. out the ass. Right, <laughs> you remember you remember albums used to get like a uh, promotion on like commercials. Oh yeah. You remember? <laughs> do they like, still do that? I don't know. Be like, Usher. Usher. Ah, I'm done. Eighty-seven oh one. Not eighty-seven oh one though. You picked that like, one. The new, oh, the new album from Usher. <laughs> you don't have to come. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I watched that video the other day. Yo. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Yo, that nigga here bobbing on the dance floor. Right, <laughs> not even bobbing in the car. You remember they was just cutting oh, up in the car. Boom, boom. <laughs> 
I went on a, I went on a cruise, yo. I went on a cruise. I was listening to the Marion Touch Duh. saw that video. Still one of the best you know, videos. Stop it. Right. <laughs> nah, let's not start, yo. Let's stay on oh, track, baby, yo. Let's start the dancing. Way. Oh, baby, by, by the way. way. <laughs> all right. Anyway, anyway. All right. So, you said something interesting the other day, and uh, you I said cassette tapes. So, no. <laughs> cassette tapes are making it back. <laughs> what I said. Uh, no, yeah. What, what was that? Um, yeah, I've been noticing that you know people releasing their music also like on cassette, and it's like, mm, but I'm like, I guess it's like a novelty, you know, yeah. collectors. I mean, so I was like, that's cool. Cause ain't nobody gonna listen to it, but it's cool to have. Nah, it's cool to have. Definitely. Yeah, when was the last time you've been to like a record store? I went to this really dope record store like I want to say a couple months ago, mm -hmm. and there's something about them. There's a reason why that's still around. Even though we're in the age of MP3, I mean, I don't, I mean DJs, and I think DJ, too, it's not like just it's DJs. just, I, of course, it's not just DJs, but just the that even has more of a novelty to it. But I think because it's just so like you know nobody's really started with cassettes yet, so that's why they're coming back finally. But um, you know, I think just the the big cover, you know what I mean? Just the, yeah. it's cool to have that. You know, yeah, there's something it's to a co it. definitely it, collector's yeah, item. To it. Yeah, collector's item, having it in your hand. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. And then just two people, you know, got record players now. You can buy, I saw them selling them at, like, what, CVS or so <laughs> around Christmas time. Like, y'all sell like record like, players? <laughs> like, I you want can, one. Yeah, you just Jazz has one. Get one Jazz wherever. Jazz has one. Oh, okay. We be playing, um, we be playing Funkadelic and shit hey. on Saturdays. That's gonna be rocking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it makes you think, yo, what happens if the internet goes down? Like, mm -hmm. all y'all with, with services screwed. Right. You ain't listening to that. Go, nah, you best start collecting like collecting them CDs. See, I'm one of them scumbags that still downloads music. I have no <laughs> I have no streaming subscriptions. My ass is still nah, downloading shit. I can't, man. I I run through storage too fast. I feel that. But like you said, our commutes are different. Like I have a very, very short commute, so I don't keep a lot of music on my phone. I keep my gym music. Not for you. Yeah. I feel you. So from there, you know, every year in Charleston, as I was doing the research, the reenactors come together <laughs> and they oh, come God. together. Right. And oh, they come boy. to get rad. Right, they come together and they honor a Confederate general, a Confederate general Stonewall. And I. Ah, oh, yeah. No, there was another stone. There was Stonewall um, where I grew up, too. Remember I was telling you about the oh, first, right. the fight of Bull Run. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Right, and then yeah, right. there's Stonewall right next to my old neighborhood as well. Virginia all up in this mess. Yeah, Virginia backwards. Right in the middle. Right. Right in the middle of everything. But I can I never understood this reenactment thing, you know what I mean? Like, right. Like, like seriously, like how how scary is how scary is it that like Confederate ideology is so strong? It's so strong that from eighteen sixty five they reenact losing every year. <laughs> like, every year they get together and they lose they schedule a l every year yeah so it's like yeah how do they end it like i, I mean know. they did win some battles so maybe they picked the ones that they won yeah, to that's reenact some, that's some revisionist history for you yeah, it's like right uh we just gonna skip over that part that's like when i watched lion king and i like to you know skip over the part when mufasa dies it didn't happen yeah pretty much but like i just imagine <laughs> like some i just imagine some hillbilly like oh, this year gonna be different jasper right? <laughs> We gonna get them. The, I'm telling you, it just feels different this year. We gonna get them yanks. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? We but, will not uh, succeed to the union. <laughs> right? No. Nope. Right. So, uh, back to the prison camps. The prison camps. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us more about this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before, before the prison camps, though, What's I wanted up? to say real quick that um, the Memorial Day practices were not initial initially even like practiced by the southerners because they didn't feel compelled to spend a day decorating the graves of their former enemies yeah they lost <laughs> they, can't be hum they can't be humble <laughs> so i mean it's like <laughs> but you know over time northerners they'd started decorating the graves of both sides as a form of reconciliation um I don't know if I've ever said this before. I saw a cannibal, not before in general, just like on the podcast. Okay. Oh, never told anybody this, but <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> um, I was watching this documentary on cannibals. It was on HBO. I remember I was like 13 or something. I saw this shit. 
and they were interviewing these dudes that were locked up that were cannibals and they said that humans taste like ham too, especially I like, Americans. <laughs> I was like, ooh, for real. <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's that bush meat. That's that bush meat. Got a little pork chop. Fried, fried bacon. All, all tender. <laughs> you probably like, I remember like, I went to that one museum or that one exi- um, exhibit they had traveling around that was showing the, um, the human body. The inside of the human yeah, body, I whatever. Remember? I didn't go. Yeah, remember I didn't I go. Book, I remember you I brought, brought that book, book back. back. Yeah. I remember, yo, I remember them fucking the muscles and shit like corned beef. I was like, mm. and I was like, wait. <laughs> yo, corned beef is corn. Corned beef hash is very underrated meat. Yo, I love corned beef. Um, so do you make that shit fresh? Oh, it's so tender. Pulls right. Let me stop. Make yourself hungry. Um, but I went to the exhibit hungry. So then I'm walking around looking at all this like preserved yeah. muscle, <laughs> human flesh, you know, he, real human muscle, and it looks like tender ass corned beef. And I'm like, yo, yo mom, I'm like it. dumb hungry. It looks like corned beef. She's like, Brett, that don't make no sense. Brett, really? That's a little gross. I was like, but. Might you be a cannibal, Brett? I don't know. I don't think so. But I was like, shit, I shouldn't come. Like, that y'all look like some meat. <laughs> Probably Terrible. Tastes good as hell. We probably like the Kobe beef. America's know, right? probably the Kobe beef of of people. Yo, little filet mignon, little ribeye. Straight up, we probably marbled the pork loin. Probably. Marbled. <laughs> <laughs> we probably marbled like hell, bro. Mm, we be at Ruth Chris and shit. <laughs> All buttery. <laughs> All buttery. Yo, when I first walked in there, I was like, it smells like butter. <laughs> the major G, he was like, yeah, everything here is cooked in butter. In his eyes, it. like he raised his eyebrows when he said it. I'm like, he must have been a fat kid too. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, everything's in butter. Everything's in butter. I was like, he got too excited, like me. <laughs> I was like, who? <laughs> but you know what's funny? Like, I feel like our idea of relationships are perfection. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what we that want it to from? be, because that sounds the, like the easiest thing. Sounds easy. They told me (laughs) no work. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. They told me I was just gonna find the one Mm -hmm. and everything was gonna snap. Yeah. You find the one and still hate that motherfucker. (laughs) Can't stand that nigga. (laughs) Right. But I think a lot of it comes from like this like over romanticized idea of relationships. Mm, Corny ass movies and shit we watched growing up. The rom coms. And it'll be like, it'll be like, they're so incompatible. She's hot. He's not. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no way this could possibly work. Uh-huh. Once in a lifetime love story. Right. Minor setback. Happy Minor ending. setback. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and we think, we think like, that's one thing. All right, if I can learn, you you can't mold nobody. No. Not you at all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Usually, the idea is I mean, that, like. Little, just a little bit, but. <laughs> you can manipulate stop. them a little just, bit, just a little bit, <laughs> a little fine, fine tune here and there. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But we're told like opposites attract. Like right, how right. early, how early on in life did we learn that? Mm-hmm. And then how quickly was that debunked when we started dating people? <laughs> Sounds real great. Yeah, do a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you actually have to start yeah, like, like sacrificing shit for it. Start being consistent. Like, all right, yeah. we gotta <laughs> move right. some things around. We got a whole 20, 20 people that listen. Maybe I mean, you feel like you owe it to them. I mean, yeah, but they do hit us going. up. Yeah, so they do hit us. Thanks up, for checking so. on us and keeping us on track. <laughs> yeah, y'all got to keep us on our dean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all got to make sure we, we we stay accountable. Right. Because, you know, you're really waiting for this content. It's hot fire. <laughs>